Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new MSI Creator Z16, or well, Z16 for everyone outside the UK, and it feels a little bit like MSI made this just for me. So MSI sent me one of the very first models of the Z16 in the UK, and together with Nvidia are very kindly sponsoring this video, but as always, all opinions are 100% my own, the good and the bad. So the Z16 is essentially a crossover, uh, not like one of these, which no one likes. This is the good kind. It's kind of like a gaming laptop meets a premium workstation, which is exactly what I want as a creator. I know I hate that word as well, but it's true. I want the performance of a gaming laptop, but also with a high quality screen, good range of connectivity, decent battery life, all those extra sort of bells and whistles, and also in a subtle but premium styling that's also reasonably portable. And this ticks pretty much all those boxes. I should say though that as you can see, I am actually running Windows 11 on this, although out of the box it ships with Windows 10, uh, which is where I did all my testing for this. But because I've actually switched to it as my main laptop, I've upgraded to the public beta of Windows 11 just because I quite like using it. So that's what I've got going on right here. So let me give you the walkthrough. And for gamers, uh, we have an RTX 3060 in here. That's a 65 watt TGP variant, as well as the latest 11th gen Intel i9 processor, plus a 120 hertz refresh screen uh, per key RGB keyboard, and also impressively good cooling, uh, which maintained performance throughout. Plus you can upgrade the RAM and storage yourself if you want to take it to the next level. But then, for us creators slash professionals, we have this absolutely gorgeous screen, which MSI are calling their true pixel display. It's nothing fancy, it's no OLED or mini LED, it's just an LED LCD, but it is a top-notch screen. Um, and we're getting a Quad HD Plus resolution, so that's 2560 by 1600, which makes this a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. They're calling it the, what was that, golden ratio, 16 by 10, the marketing suggests things like Fibonacci's sequence and Renaissance art. Marketing waffle aside, this is, I think, the best aspect ratio, although feel free to disagree. Do you prefer three by two or your regular 16 by nine? Let me know which uh, you think is the best in the comments. And so it's a terrific screen and also a touchscreen, which may be helpful for doing some uh, electronic signatures, or if you want to pair this with a stylus or a pen, uh, then you can get some proper doodling action going on. It's also impressively color accurate, measuring 100% of the sRGB and 99% of the DCI-P3 gamuts, so this is ideal for video editors. However, you can't escape just how reflective this is, which is fine if you've got a nice blacked out background uh, as this lady's uh, staring you down, but as soon as you bring it into any kind of lighting or even put your own face in front of it in a normal environment, it gets a bit distracting. This is very, very glossy, which does help the colors pop a bit more. It feels a bit more vibrant, more contrasty. I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence. Do you prefer matte or glossy? I think when it comes to gaming, matte is the way forward, but then the glossy is kind of nice for, you know, creative workloads. It's a balance, I'm not sure. What I was really surprised by though is the speakers. They are very, very good on this. Genuinely punchy with a surprisingly wide soundstage. And then inside, powering everything, we have a big 90 watt hour battery. So we're looking at about six hours of light use or about two if you're editing a 4K video in Premiere Pro on high performance mode. We also get a pretty solid range of ports, including two Thunderbolt 4 Type C's and a couple of Type A's as well, uh, the latest 3.2 Gen 2. Also a micro SD card reader, which is fine. I'd rather have a full size SD if possible. Uh, and also a headphone and mic jack. And it's all in a chassis that's just 2.2 kilograms, which isn't bad at all for a 16 inch laptop because uh, for context, the slightly larger XPS 17 is 200 grams heavier than this. And the Razer Blade 17 is half a kilogram heavier than this. Yes, they're a little bit bigger, but in its category, in its class, this is one of the lightest uh, performance laptops you can get. So you will feel it in your backpack, but it is definitely a good travel companion as well. So we're getting an all aluminum chassis. This is in uh, lunar gray. Uh, and we also have this MSI Dragon logo laser etched into the lid. And as you can see, there's this big exhaust fan at the top of the keyboard. It's not the speaker grill. They're downward firing speakers at the front. 
but I do have a couple of niggles. Uh, for example, the bezels are quite chunky, especially this chin at the bottom. So next to something like the XPS 17, it doesn't look quite as futuristic. Uh, also, why do we have a separate fingerprint here? Couldn't they build it maybe into the power button uh, like we see on some models? And also as we are down here, the trackpad is fine, it's Microsoft Precision, uh, so it's nice and responsive, but I do feel like maybe they could have made it a bit bigger, utilized this space a bit more, and also it presses in quite a long way, particularly on this lower right, it's not quite even, and so you can actually get your finger under the lip of the body a little bit, so not my favorite, but it's certainly functional. You know, there's nothing to the side of the keyboard here, Perhaps they could have squeezed in a numpad, that would have been nice. But it is a classy laptop and it would look just as good at the office, uh, maybe without the rainbow RGB keys though, or at home in your gaming setup. So the Z16 is an NVIDIA Studio certified laptop, which means MSI have worked with NVIDIA to pick the best components and test it with the broadest range of creative apps. So whether you spend your life in the Adobe suite like me, or you're developing, say, in the Unreal Engine or rendering in 3ds Max, it's all been tested and NVIDIA have certified the Z16. And of course, having an RTX 3000 series card, the 3016 here, we have all the gaming benefits of ray tracing, DLSS AI upscaling, NVIDIA Reflex, which reduces latency, and also NVIDIA Broadcast, improving the quality of your streams, whether you're on Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Twitch, and it's handy for blurring or switching backgrounds and reducing ambient noise. So obviously this isn't the only crossover creator laptop on the market. Most of the big brands have something like this, but as far as I know, this is the only laptop that has a 16 by 10 high refresh display on a creator laptop like this. So that does make it stand out, as does the price actually, which I'll come back to at the end. It is very expensive, but it's either on par or actually a little bit cheaper than its rivals. But I've made you wait long enough. Let's talk about performance. And the Z16 comes in two specs. They both have the 3060, but then either an i7 with a full HD plus screen or an i9 and quad HD plus screen. Uh, and I've got the higher end model here, although only with 16 gigs of RAM, but it can be specced with 32, or as I say, you can upgrade it yourself. And while so far I've been waffling on about how you can use a gaming laptop's performance for everything else, this is still a capable gaming laptop. At Full HD with high settings, we're getting triple digits in all of my games on test, well, except for Cyberpunk, but that's still a decent 51. Now, of course, NVIDIA's DLSS technology helps out here in games that support it, and that's just one of the benefits of having an RTX card in here. And overall, the 3060 is a properly solid gaming card at 1080p. And we're near enough maxing out that 120 hz refresh in these AAA games at high settings. But then, at the same time, this 8-core i9 and 3060 combo gives me a smooth 4K editing timeline in Premiere Pro. I mostly still use proxies because I shoot 10-bit 422, uh, but scrubbing through footage and rendering is nice and fast as you'd expect. And thanks to the dedicated NVENC encoder on the GPU, a 10-minute 4K project takes me about 8 minutes to render using the 3060, compared to a whopping 52 minutes using only the CPU. And that's the power of RTX GPU acceleration. Plus the AI smarts of the card speeds up features like auto reframe and scene detection in Premiere Pro, or say speed warp in DaVinci Resolve. So for my workflows in Premiere Pro and Lightroom and a bit of Photoshop, and also a little bit of gaming maybe in the evening, this does the job. So if you do pick one of these up and you jump into the GeForce experience, uh, you will see that by default, we have NVIDIA's Studio drivers downloaded. Uh, these are slightly better optimized for a wider range of apps, or if you want the absolute latest uh, game drivers, then you can still switch to the game ready drivers. Now you might also be able to see that we have this whisper mode, uh, which is 2.0 now because we've got the 3000 series cards. Uh, not every RTX laptop has that. It's up to the manufacturer whether they include it and we do get it with this. So you can turn that on, select different acoustic profiles and that will limit, well, the sound coming out of it. But one of the best things about this, which I found out in my testing, is that it doesn't get very loud. I've never actually needed to use whisper mode because even under load, you can hear the fans, but it's, reasonably quiet actually, so it's doing a really good job. The only downside really is it gets quite toasty at the top here. So uh, this is a fan exhaust, not the speakers, which are actually uh, downward firing at the front. This gets quite warm. I measured sort of mid-high 50 degrees Celsius, so keep your hands away from that. Although I have found when I was doing some touchscreen stuff and my palm rested there, it was a bit uncomfortable. 
Generally, though, it's not been a problem. The keyboard and the touchpad itself never got uncomfortably warm. Uh, but yeah, just stay clear of this area. Now, the webcam isn't amazing. I've seen better, I've seen worse. Uh, it is on the top bezel, so it's in a good location. I think it sounds okay. A little bit soft, a little bit noisy. Uh, of course, you can use NVIDIA Broadcast uh, to sharpen it up and remove the background. This is just being shot with the camera app uh, for some raw footage from the webcam. It's okay, does the job, that's about it. So that is the Z16. And I know what you're thinking, great stuff, how much? Well, it starts from about 1,900 pounds and goes up to 2,600. But honestly, that base spec is probably the best choice. And of course, you can always upgrade the RAM and SSD yourself later if you want to. And if you do fancy checking this out for yourself, I will leave links in the description below. I'm using this now as my main laptop, at least until MSI uh, takes it away from me because it is just a review sample. But I've had a really good time with this. It's not perfect. Uh, I think if they maybe trim the bezels, sort of sorted out that trackpad a little bit, uh, and also maybe offered a 3070, perhaps with a 4K screen, that could be nice. But beyond that, there isn't really much to criticize, and I think MSI's done a really good job with this. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you make of this in the comments. And also, let's say you did have two and a half or three grand to spend on a laptop right now. What would you buy? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Jam.